In last week's episode, we looked at the effects of tropical deforestation, highlighting a range of issues that stem from cutting down trees. That led us to ask the question, if the consequences are so bad, why do we do it? Why do we cut down trees? Well, principally, the answer is this. Forests are a long-term commitment. To reach maturity, a tree can take many human lifetimes. And in much of the tropics, fertile land is hard to come by. As the global population continues to expand, there are more mouths to feed. This drives economic incentives to free up land for agriculture. In the last decade, one of the main drivers of tropical deforestation in South America and Southeast Asia has been the economic incentives to produce biofuels. Biofuels. By growing plants and extracting oil from them, biofuels were presented as a green alternative to conventional fossil fuel extraction, as they technically would be carbon neutral, given that the plants take up CO2 during their life cycle. So, there's no net gain of CO2 in the atmosphere. But, the reality is that biofuels have created a huge market for clearing primary forest and planting biofuel crops such as soy and palm oil that actually have far lower rates of photosynthesis than the original trees. And thus, have a substantial carbon footprint both in the short term and in the long term, which effectively renders the purpose of biofuels redundant. And it is because of these economic incentives that compared with long-term forest management, more money, at least in the short term, can be made by clearing forests, selling off the timber and other forest products in one go, and planting crops to make money. Now, given that many of the world's poorest people live within and beside forests, why shouldn't they try and make a better life for themselves? Well, while many of the world's most economically developed countries have cut down much of their forests, this does not mean that deforestation is a direct route to economic development. Correlation is not the same as causation. In 2009, a survey of 286 areas of the Amazon found something quite surprising. Using the Human Development Index, which examines literacy, income and life expectancy, researchers found that although there was an initial spike in HDI at the beginning of tree felling, this rapidly declined following the clearing of woodland, suggesting that the benefits are only temporary and will likely have a negative impact in the long term, as forest products are no longer available. Thus, there is a strong argument to conserve forests and exploit them only on a sustainable level. So, you might be asking, what is being done about tropical deforestation? This has been a topic of much discussion in the year and for the last 40 years. And yet, little has actually been achieved. Traditional approaches have been to make logging illegal in many parts by creating reserves for tropical forests. But the socio-economic drivers of deforestation are still in place, meaning people have continued to cut down trees regardless of the rules. However, there is some good news. Recognition of the need to provide economic incentives to create sustainable forest-based livelihoods have been manifested in the creation of RED. This is the Reducing of Emissions from Deforestation and Degradation initiative that will pay poorer, underdeveloped countries to keep and maintain their rainforests thus providing an initiative for them to be kept. But there remains a long road ahead if nationwide deforestation is to be achieved.